mute the audio and only unmute the video during the event. We cordially invite you to take your own firm and comfort seat in your own room and please avoid the backlight. Make sure that you have a good and stable internet connection. If you have an earphone or headset, we recommend you to use it so that your voice can clearly and loudly to be heard. During the Q&A discussion session, all participants, please use the chat box to deliver the questions. Thank you for your cooperation and consideration. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the guest lecture series on SDGs today, Tuesday, the 5th of October 2021. I am Nabila from ITS Global Engagement, and I will be your master of ceremony this afternoon. Thank you for joining our guest lecture series on SDGs today. Before we start our agenda, let me inform you some rules for the event. First, please adjust your name or ID screen using format name underscore campus. Second, during the lecture, Please turn off your microphone and only turn on the microphone when the moderator gives the chance. Third, please fill your attendance at bit.ly slash gls underscore attendance. Our committee also send the attendance link in the Zoom chat room. For participants who wish to get an e-certificate and stamp for it, please fill the attendance 15 minutes after the session starts. And the fourth, Participants who wish to ask questions during the question and answer session, please send your question to bit.ly slash gls underscore Q&A. The link for questions listed in the chat room as well. Or you can also ask directly by clicking the right hand feature. Today's GLS on SDGs will discuss about goal number four, quality education with two incredible experts who have joined with us today. Let me greet our respected speakers first. The first speaker is Associate Professor Wan Abdul Rahim Wan Muhammad Isa from University Technology Mara, Malaysia. Hello, Professor. How are you? Hello, I'm fine. Thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, Professor. Thank you for attending today's session. And we will also have another expert, Mr. Shet Raihanul Islam from Daffodil International University, Bangladesh. Hello, nice to meet you. And I'm very glad to be part of uh, today's GLS on SDG. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Shet. Uh, it's our pleasure to have you today. Thank you. And as important as our speakers, our moderator today, Bapak Nisfu Asrul Sani, also known as Pak Sony from ITS Surabaya. Hello, Pak Sony. Hello, Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Thank you, Pak Sony, for joining with us today. And uh, today's topic, uh, we will have two topics. The first is framing of system methodology for community IT-based project that will be delivered by Associate Professor Wan Abdul Rahim Wan Muhammad Isa. And after that, we will continue with the next topic, digitalization as a core pillar for institutional sustainability, GIU experience that will be delivered by Mr. Shet Raihanul Islam. And today's session is moderated by uh, Bapak Nisfu Asrul Sani, MSc. Before we start our agenda, allow me to deliver our schedule today as follows. The first is opening. Second, introduction to moderator and speaker. Third, lecture session. Fourth, Q&A session. Fifth, certificate awarding. And lastly, uh, the closing session. Now, uh, I guess everyone's excited to have the discussion today. 
But before we proceed to the next agenda, let me introduce our moderator today. Yeah, our moderator today is Bapak Nisfu Asrul Sani from ITS Surabaya. Uh, she earned his Bachelor of Computer Science in Information System at ITS Surabaya. And then uh, he earned the Master of Science in Interdisciplinary IT from Kongkuk University, Korea. And uh, he is now a lecturer in information system at ITS Surabaya, and also a part-time lecturer in industrial engineering at STTAL or Nevis School Engineering. Uh, Bapak Niswa Asrosoni is also information systems Android community founder and supervisor, and also a trainer at Oracle Academy Asia Pacific. Uh, and then his research and products include application development site history in recognition of three-dimensional interactive map 3D engine using Unity, uh, application development visualization companies in the form of three-dimensional maps, and then three-dimensional special applications, and lastly, uh, the 3D viewer mobile application development and augmented reality. So this is the profile of today's moderator. And now without further ado, let's proceed to the lecture session. To Pak Sony, I give the virtual microphone to you. Okay, thank you very much for the introduction. First of all, thank you very much for uh, ITS International Office to give me an opportunity to lead this uh, great guest lecture series in sustainable development and growth. And also, uh, I welcome to uh, both our keynote speaker today, uh, Dr. Rahim, and then Mr. Raihan. Thank you very much for uh, your coming and your uh, guest lecture series. Okay, uh, before I start uh, this keynote speech, uh, let me introduce our first guest lecture. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, you can also access uh, our guest lecture in the YouTube channel in ITS International Office. So right now we are uh, live streaming on YouTube. And okay. Oh. Don't worry, I have the slide as well. So this is a good uh, back up, I think. I also have uh, the slide of uh, Dr. Rahim. Uh, okay, thank you very much. So, uh, I will introduce uh, Dr. Rahim. Uh, he earned his bachelor degree in IT uh, in University Tanaka National, only 10. In 2002, and then he earned uh, the MBA in IT Management, University Multimedia in uh, Cyberjaya, Malaysia. I have a lot of friends right there. I'm sorry, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I cannot uh, lead this uh, session formally. <laughs> and then he earned also uh, the PhD in Science in University Technology Mara, UITM in Malaysia in 2009. And uh, Dr. Rahim works experience are, uh, he is a lecturer uh, in Perak 2002 until 2005. And then uh, he also uh, was the lecturer from University of Mara uh, in Shah Alam Selangor 2008 until 2011. And then senior lecturer in University Technology Mara uh, 2008, uh, 11 until 2018 and uh, the current position he is an associate professor in U University Technology Mara Shah Alam Selangor Malaysia and I read uh, his uh, uh, CV uh, very long CV 
but we will resume into one page. I'm sorry, Dr. Rahim. Uh, his research areas are information architecture and human computer interaction. Uh, this is uh, my field as well in Korea. And then IT management, value sensitive design in ethic, culture, and Islam. So, uh, Dr. Rahim will uh, give lecture about SSM. This is also uh, new for me to hear about the SSM, soft system methodology. But I think uh, maybe we can learn or explore more from uh, Dr. Rahim. So without further ado, please give virtual applause to Dr. Rahim. And Dr. Rahim, the screen is yours. Yeah, first and foremost, uh, thank you so much, uh, Pak Sani, uh, for the uh, introduction. Uh, I'm truly honored and grateful to be here, to be part of this uh, part particular guest lecture series on SDG. And um, I think um, what, would, what would be uh, the most important for us to learn from each other. I, I'm looking forward as well for the next speaker as well. <laughs> okay, so basically, um, let me just share my slide. Okay, can, can you see my slide? Is it okay? Yes, we can okay. see the so, slide. So uh, I'm going to off my camera so that we will have a smooth connection, yeah? So uh, basically, this is uh, my topic for today. Yeah, I'm going to share a little bit of the um, uh, the, the framing of the uh, soft system methodology, okay? Uh, for community IT-based projects. So basically, in this particular Slide, what I'm going to do, I'm going to share a little bit uh, of how we implement in UC Technology Mara this particular uh, soft system methodology. Um, and uh, I, I will share one project uh, where uh, my students in Master of Science in IT have uh, implemented uh, during one of their projects. Yeah, so, so this is one way for them to learn uh, to address quality education SDG in their curriculum. Okay. Um, so basically, uh, Pasani has um, give uh, a good introduction about myself, but just I would like to highlight that I'm also the uh, ACM senior member, okay, and also uh, IT, IPP senior member, and uh, currently uh, I'm also uh, am a professional technologist from National Board of Technologies, okay, up to 2021. Okay, a little bit of the university where I'm coming from. Okay, uh, my university is, a, is the largest university in Malaysia. Basically, we have uh, 35 uh, branch campuses throughout Malaysia. And we have um, uh, more than 504 programs. And we have, uh, currently we have 172,000 students. Okay, this is quite a big university. If you're coming to uh, Malaysia, um, there's, there's a lot of um, uh, programs that we are offering, ranging from uh, humanities, engineering, uh, business, and IT, and, and there's a lot of uh, option for students to pursue for postgraduate level as well, okay? Okay, so uh, for, for the impression, I will just to recap back of what is sustainable development goals, yeah? So that um, it is crucial for the audience to be able to align accordingly, okay? So my presentation today, basically we align the SDG to our curriculum. Okay, to our one of our subject uh, in, in our master's program. Okay, so this is where we would like to create awareness for our students. Yeah, so when we talk about uh, sustainable development goals, this is basically we would like uh, we would like to share the same um, uh, area of concern that uh, what the uh, United Nations are calling for all countries, whether poor, rich, middle income countries where they would like, we would like to promote pros prosperity while protecting the planet, okay? So um, the development uh, that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs, okay? So I think when it started in 
Philippines and uh, aiming for to be is to be to be addressed fully in 2030 is 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 a is a huge challenge for all. So whether it's being implemented 100% or whether just to create awareness is is um is the responsibility to be uphold by all. Okay. So in Malaysia, I think we have uh, also shared the same same concern. Okay, in our university as well as in our government. Uh, where we would like to address this particular SDG, where we have uh, 17 uh, SDG. So our focus today, we would like to concentrate more, to discuss more on the quality of education, okay? So let us just go to the slide of the uh, quality education, okay? Some of the summary of description of SDG number four on the quality of educations. Yeah, where we like to en ensure inclusive and quality education for all and promote lifelong learning. Okay, so basically, uh, this is where the motivation would be able to, we would like to uh, be able to break from the cycle of poverty, where, where all, all have the, the, the equal opportunity to learn, okay, and to create more tolerance uh, between people and contributes to more peaceful society, okay. So these are some of the efforts yeah, in the uh, United Nations website. Basically, they, they mentioned that increased enrollment in primary education, um, increased access for education for women and, and, and girls, right? Affordable education, encourage. But in UITM, our vision, mission, and objective, basically, we would like to, to uh, look at the Bumi Putras yeah, on, on the local native uh, basically, yeah. So, so this is where the quality of education we would like to to also include those who, who belongs to the indigenous group of people, yeah. So called uh, orang asli, yeah, native people who who may have um, uh, uh, that need to be to be included uh, to ensure that the education is also they have the same equal of opportunity to get uh, the equal chance uh, of getting. Uh, education, whether at primary, secondary, or higher level of uh, education. Okay. Okay. These are other examples. Yeah. Um, and uh, on addressing SDG, but the most important thing is that uh, I would like to share that when we talk about uh, 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 the the SDG, there's a lot of varieties of ways where you can implement. So not to be uh, just, just based on this one particular example, we have many examples, but I'm going to share one example where we have implemented, where we frame the soft system methodology. Yeah. So when we talk about uh, soft system methodology, this is actually a, met a good method. Yeah. Especially in IT discipline, um, where uh, normally when we, when when we uh, develop a particular solution, we we tend to come up with a very technical oriented uh, uh, base that fulfill the functional and non-functional requirement, okay? But we forget about the, the, the essence of whether the system or the solution actually satisfy the needs of the user, okay? So this is a good methodology because um, it also address the human uh, uh, approach, the soft approach, where uh, basically uh, we would like to ensure that we are addressing uh, the the problem systematically and in organized manner, okay? Because there, there are tendencies where we solve the wrong problem, okay? So so this particular methodology uh, we have embedded in our curriculum uh, as one of the uh, topic in um, problem solving formalism for IT. We feel that students need to know this one method that may, that may be applicable because. Uh, based on this particular method, I think they have uh, done a good research when coming out with this particular method. Uh, it was being developed uh, uh, by uh, uh, an academician in University of Lancaster, where they, impl they implemented a 10-year uh, active research program. Okay, and um, basically, um, um, uh, the the key essence is that uh, we are trying to identify. Uh, unstructured problem yeah we look at a problem which which are unstructured which are unknown okay and then we try to look it uh, in a more holistic view okay so in in that particular perspective 
okay, that there is a need for, for you to not to be biased and, and try to understand uh, the, 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 the real problem, okay? Because when we talk about uh, the particular problem, sometimes we, we tend to uh, not to uh, solve the, the problems where the problem is uh, is not clearly defined okay so there are basically seven stage okay of um, uh, uh, of this method yeah uh, which which is uh, good yeah uh, meaning to say in 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 our curriculum in uh, problem solving formalism for it this is one subject in master of it program so students know, know this particular method by concept, and then we ask them to actually implement it uh, throughout the semester. Okay, we need to say they, they engage one target group, okay, and then they, they follow systematically this particular process one by one. And then at the end, they come up with a solution that actually solve the identified problem. So we look at uh, how they tackle the problem systematically, okay. So this is where um, uh, um, students learn by doing, yeah. Uh, which they they know the the method by concept and then they actually implement it accordingly in their project. Okay. So this is how we address quality education. And at the same time, um, 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 the project is streamlined according to the the specific group. So so the the project that I'm going to share is actually where the student align quality of education. Um, SDG to uh, the indigenous group of people, okay, where they try to find out what would be uh, their needs, yeah, where, where, they, where they, when they go to that particular community, um, uh, doing this particular interview with the local community, they understand, they understand that um, there's a lot of uh, issues involving uh, quality education, okay. Um, okay, let me just... Uh, Okay, so this is one example okay, of our students uh, who actually um, uh, we are very proud of our students manage to contribute okay, and, and engage with uh, local communities. Okay, so we have uh, the local Jabatan um, or ASB, okay, uh, where they actually provide some, some um, uh, information for, for our students. Okay. And when they address this particular uh, SDG in their project, uh, they, 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 they are focusing on the native uh, students in Malaysia. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of um, issues revolving a uh, lacking of education and achievements. Okay, so this is where they align quality education to, to the project and where they are tackling this particular problem by using the, by framing the uh, some systematology into their project. Okay, so among the problems that they find when, when they engage with this particular native people, they, they, they found that um, low literacy and numeracy skills, okay, some of the factors, yeah, and distance to school, poverty, and lack of school materials, right, and sometimes uh, there, there are tendency where the, the children uh, need to assist their parents, yeah. So, so there's a there's a lot of cases where poor school attendance, school, school drop up problems, yeah, to, uh, revolving with uh, native uh, people. Okay, so um, uh, basically the project, uh, uh, one of the uh, um, project group uh, of that particular class, yeah, they would like to investigate further on the requirement to design. Um, the, the the virtual platform yeah for looking for volunteers to teach uh, in these particular apps and to develop the e e volunteer teaching platform for Kampung Oransi yeah so this is just a prototype that they come out with yeah okay uh, but the most important thing is that I would like the audience to really appreciate about the soft system methodology because when it first started yeah uh i think in 1981 yeah so so the stages uh, uh evolve from time to time okay meaning to say uh the the essence has uh, been transcended according to the 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 different cases where it has been implemented okay so it is uh, rather important that we understand that this particular um 
uh, method is 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 uh, where we where we 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 can use it uh, to identify unstructured problems. Yeah, but there are some limitation definitely. Yeah, when we use this particular method. Yeah, uh, because normally when it's implemented um, according to the case study that you have selected. Normally, the, the how do I say the researcher or those students who implemented may not have experience, but it's good uh, when you implement it uh, to one or two cases and then it starts to evolve uh, more than one. You have more experience to tackle these particular issues accordingly. Okay, so I'm going to share. Okay, uh, uh, stage by stage. So looking at stage one, where it, it is um, addressing on the uh, particular uh, prob situation which is considered prob problematic. Okay, so here, uh, what what is uh, rather at the essence is that uh, usually problem situation is, is is unstructured. Okay, it is unstructured. So we need to structure it accordingly. So in order for us to to start to transform from unstructured to structured form, yeah, we need to answer this particular question. Okay, we need to answer about uh, looking at who are the key players. Okay, what are the perceptions? What are the process? What are the structures uh, within the vicinity of the targeted problem? Okay, so. So exploring understanding unstructured situation requ requires objective investigation and analysis. Okay, and normally it's not um, um, an easy task. It requires a lot of critical analysis as well. Okay, you need to have an open mind, and um, there are so also uh, cases where you you may have a, a set target at the very beginning, but as you engage with the community, you will view the problem. Uh, uh, from multiple perspective, okay, where maybe um, uh, at the beginning you are looking at analytical perspective, but as you you engage with the community, you will see that there are also people perspective or organization perspective that you need to uh, take all of this particular aspect into consideration. Yeah. So. Uh, our students uh, have uh, engaged interview sessions, yeah, uh, with with the the uh, the native people, yeah. Uh, so basically, they structure the, the the essence of the particular problem, looking at what are the uh, the play, the observations, yeah, and, and how do they actually conduct or gather the information required, okay, and what are the um, the the analysis that they able to uh, gather okay and then looking at stage two yeah uh, express the problem situation yeah so um the wonderful thing about uh using this method in phase two uh you can you can it, it, it need to be illustrated clearly by using this uh by building uh, the so-called rich feature okay so the rich picture is actually uh, where you you are looking at the power, uh, power structure, the hierarchy, and looking at the pattern of communications. Yeah. So um, and and when when you are coming out with rich picture, um, the, the the notations yeah normally being used yeah um, is is not being restricted. Okay. You have all the freedom, all the flexibility to identify accordingly. Okay. So I we encourage our students to be more creative uh, and and provide a much more detailed visual representation, okay? Uh, that that uh, actually um, um, when they come out with this particular rich picture, there are no real real rules included, okay? Uh, so given it's unrestricted, you can address any key consideration, okay, that you have identified uh, during the first uh, phase, okay? So that. You are able to describe the problematic situation clearly. Okay, so when they engage with the native, they, they are looking at the uh, native, the indigenous people, children, where they have uh, problems of uh, transporting from um, their home to their schools. Okay, and then uh, low engagement with uh, with um, the particular relevant uh, teachers, and and there's a lot of. Um, 
um, um, issues on the technology part as well. Okay. And then uh, for the stage three, okay, this is where um, uh, uh, we we the, the phase where students need to formulate the uh, basic uh, definitions, okay, um, the the root definitions, yeah. So there, there are some uh, jargon associated in this particular stage where basically students need to use this so, so called mnemonic, okay. Uh, this is where um, uh, this element has been developed by David David Smith, yeah. So called, so that we have uh, uh, an understanding of um, how the system should function. So you need to identify who are the customers, the action, the actors, transformations, yeah, uh, the worldview, okay, the owners, and also the environmental constraint, okay. So all of this uh, is where you need to identify it clearly so that. Uh, the 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 systematic point of view, okay, uh, is is being addressed, okay, and when we have this root, um, so called uh, cat cat wool uh, analysis, okay, we will be able to uh, incorporate a particular view of the world, okay, so that we know that uh, the belief that we know that um, in order for them to get better job, they need to have a proper education. This is the world view. Uh, that is being included in this particular uh, systematic point of view, okay? And um, 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 there's, there's also uh, the, the uh, particular way where, where you implemented, you will know that uh, this particular uh, chat cat who will be used, okay, uh, as a guide, okay? And then uh, in uh, particular uh, stage four, okay, uh, where uh, the, the, the task would be to build conceptual model of the system, okay, named in the root definition, okay. So uh, this is where the conceptual model is being uh, proposed, yeah. Uh, when we talk about conceptual model, okay, when we talk about concept, conceptual model, the most important thing that you need to understand is that it should be spin off from the root uh, definitions, okay? And the activities uh, are being uh, clear, uh, clearly defined, okay? So, so when we have this particular conceptual model, um, we can have a lot of different uh, uh, version as well, but um, as, as it improved from version one, version two, and version three, we will be able to identify clearly Okay, the, the clear activities, okay, uh, that, that uh, basically would uh, be able to, um, you will be able to come up, compose a good conceptual models, okay, that are created for each activity, okay, and, and uh, would provide a guide for you as well, okay. Okay, and, and looking at the measure of performance, yeah, this is where, uh, it also uh, being being um, identified by my students in their project as well. Yeah, so uh, looking at the criteria of efficiency, efficiency and effectiveness. Yeah, when we talk about efficiency, it's more about looking at uh, the transformation of producing uh, the desired uh, output. Okay, so basically, whether a good education will assist students to be able to get a good job. And then uh, efficiency, the output is obtained with minimal resources, okay? So, so how do they actually uh, get uh, to, to, to get uh, basic ed educations? And then criteria of effectiveness, yeah, where uh, at some point of time, okay, the transformation is worth doing because it contributes to some higher level of long-term uh, aims, okay? Okay, so, and then in stage five, okay, uh, comparing models with the real world, okay. So for this particular activity, yeah, uh, for stage five, this is where uh, the conceptual model are being compared with what happens in the real world, okay. So it, it, this is where, the question should be asked, yeah, when, when, when we have come up with the conceptual model, whether it's, uh, it's uh, feasible or not, 
whether it can be implemented or not. So for each of the activity, some of the question that you may want to um, uh, probe, uh, whether the activity can be carried out in the real world. Sometimes it, what, what you propose may not be logic, may not be sensible to be implemented, uh, may not be feasible as well. So you need to be asking a lot of questions. How is it going to be done? How is the performance going to be measured? Is the, is the activity carried out effectively? Yeah, so, so, so the, 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 the fundamental part would be to check whether the conception model represents a viable human activity uh, activities. Okay, so this is, is, is some of the uh, so-called uh, the logic that you can try to figure out. Okay, but uh, the, the key part is that the conceptual model should be normally it, it is based on theory, based on what you understand, but um, it can be a far cry from reality. Okay, so that is why it is rather important for us to correspond with the real world. So that the gap analysis offer a solution so that uh, we are trying to reduce the gap by looking at different uh, views as well okay so uh, this is where uh, the logic is, is being uh, uh, used into a uh, uh, practical uh, part where you know that uh, it is important for the system when it's implemented it improves the education level improves the education material or whether it can uh, assist for uh, the possibility for the uh, native children, the indigenous uh, uh, people, children to further their studies. Yeah, not, not at just one level, okay, but um, uh, transcends to the next uh, higher education as well, okay. And then uh, in stage five, okay, sorry, six, uh, stage six, yeah, define possible changes which are possible and feasible, okay? Um, so this is where um, it is being implemented in, in this particular project, but the most important thing to understand in this particular stage is that um, the purpose is to investigate whether the activities is um, uh, both culturally and systematically desirable, okay? So you need to uh, bridge together Okay, to, to ensure that, um, to share the understanding of different perception of the situations, okay? And then, um, and it, it, the, the stage six is not uh, working in silo. You need to refer back to whatever uh, possibility of changing the situation generated in stage five, yeah? In stage five, you compare with real world, sometimes we need to do some amendment. It's not realistic. So uh, this is where uh, for each of the proposed change, uh, you need to write down as clearly as possible, okay, and, and to note whether the, the reasons for change, the nature of the, uh, um, of the change of the information, yeah, the mean of um, 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 ensuring that the change has been done, yeah, you need to ensure that um, by doing this, we are actually assessing the uh, the feasibility of the proposed changes, okay, by looking at other aspects, well, whether in terms of cost, uh, short term and long term benefits, yeah. So, so you, you are looking at whether uh, it can be achieved or not, okay, the goals that you have set, okay. So, this is uh, the example where the student has implemented, okay, uh, in this particular project, okay, and then um, in the last stage. Uh, stage seven, take, take actions uh, to improve the problem situation, okay? So since this is a six months project, uh, normally they, at the end of the semester, they will come up with a prototype, only a prototype, but uh, uh, the possibility of, of changing the situations, yeah? So it takes a lot of um, uh, effort as well, okay? For students to be able to come up with the solutions. But for this particular stage, basically uh, the purpose of this stage to recommend changes and tactics for implemented implementation of those uh, changes that to be implemented, okay, um, to solve that particular problem, okay. So you can you can have a guideline or you may have a system or a solutions, okay, uh, where uh, the 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 positive effect is being implemented, okay, and. Um, where normally where the solutions need to be uh, 
uh, presented, okay, the finding, okay, and also the reporting as well, yeah, uh, it should be systematically uh, documented, okay, uh, and um, it is necessary to take actions to improve the problematic situations, okay. So the changes from step six will be implemented supposedly, okay, in the in the particular um, community or organizations, but okay, let's say if the problem still occur, yeah. So if the problem still occur, then um, uh, the cycle starts again at the first stage, meaning to say uh, the solution does not actually solve the problems. So uh, the self systematology is you can consider it as an iterative cycle, yeah. So it, it should not stop here. But again, uh, as I mentioned in the very beginning, this is to create awareness for my students so they, they understand that it can be implemented. But if they implemented, but uh, if it does not actually solve the problem, or when maybe when they implemented, they under they they, they see that maybe indigenous people will have some technological uh, restriction as well because they need to go to a particular center, okay, IT center to be able to use this this particular platform, yeah. So so they need to go back to the first phase as as well, okay. So um and and. What is uh, basically they, they done is that they come up with this particular e, e volunteer teaching platform, yeah. But they 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 feel that it should be attached with the non government organization as well, okay. But again, uh, when doing volunteer works, the limitation would be uh, to getting to to get volunteers, okay. So when you, when when you have uh, difficulties to to assemble a uh, 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 a group of group group, a group of uh, volunteers that will be able to serve during uh, uh, different period of times according to to the, uh, uh, to, to, to the time allocated for them to actually get um, 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 ed education okay uh, because uh, some of the native of the uh, indigenous people actually they, they are working uh, to they are working to assist their their their, their parents Okay, so so if, if there, there is a possibility for this particular platform to actually solve that particular uh, issues, okay, uh, need, need to be uh, tackled accordingly, okay. And then uh, this is just a platform, yeah. Um, I, I do not have the, the full system with me right now, but basically this is what they are proposing. And uh, they completed the whole uh, phase from phase one up to phase um, seven, okay. and and um uh, even though in stage seven they should be implemented by uh, for this particular uh since we embed in our curriculum so basically um, they just come up with a prototype okay so this is one way where we can actually embed uh, the sdg in our curriculum in our subject whether you can implement uh, according to uh, the content according to the outcome according to the assessment or according to the on how how you conduct your class yeah the teaching and learning activities okay so this is one way where where we embed the SDG in our curriculum okay okay so that is uh, basically what i'm trying to wrap up okay uh, thank you uh, so much for for your time uh, with that i end my presentation thank you Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Rahim, for the presentation. Uh, this is very interesting because uh, every problem needs solution. And uh, the key part of uh, Dr. Rahim uh, lecture is how we can build the model uh, into the part of the solution. Okay, thank you very much. And we will proceed to uh, our second uh, lecture or speaker. Uh, but before uh, we go to uh, our next agenda, uh, I remind you that uh, you can drop your question. We provide the link in the chat box. You can access and maybe you can fill uh, your question uh, with the, the form that we provide in chat. So feel free uh, to type your question 
And also, if you have difficulty to uh, translate into English, so I think it doesn't matter. Uh, we will help you to translate into English. So our next speaker uh, is uh, Mr. Raihan. Uh, I will uh, read his CV for brief. Uh, he earned the BA house in English uh, field in Davodil International University in 2013. And then he earned the MA in English uh, department or English field in Davodil University uh, in 2014. And uh, his work experience are from 2009 until now. Uh, he is the independent short filmmaker. Wow, very <laughs> interesting. I hope we can share, uh, Mr. Raihan will share something about filmmaker. I think- the, Yeah, I hope so in future, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then in 2011 and 2012, he was an assistant producer of Zero Point Media. I think this also related with film industry. And then 2015 and 2017, uh, he works in creative audiovisual teacher in Daffodil University, uh, sorry, Daffodil International University. And then uh, 2013 until now, uh, he is a senior assistant in director in international affair, Daffodil International University uh, in Bangladesh. So uh, the third part is his organizational engagement membership, um, fellow senior member, Children Film Society in Bangladesh or CFSDB since 2011. And he's also advisor in English Literacy Club, ELC in Davodil Uni uh, International University since 2019. And he also uh, become an advisor in Social Business Student Forum or SPSF uh, since 2019. And he also an ambassador of EURIE uh, at EURAS or Eurasian Universities Union since 2020. And then the last but not least, he is also an active member in NAFSA, Association of International Educator since 2018. So Mr. Raihan will present uh, about digital digitalization as a core pillar for institutional sustainability or DIU experience. Okay, so uh, as we know that uh, now we are entering the digital era, everything is almost digital. Book is replaced by digital and also uh, school become digital and everything become digital. Uh, find our girlfriend also digital, am I right? And then maybe some someday, we will marry it with virtual. I don't know. I just imagine that something crazy virtual invention. Okay. So before uh, we begin with uh, Mr. Raihan's speech, give him a big round virtual applause. And Mr. Raihan, 40 minutes for yours. And the screen is yours as well. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Nisifu Ashraful Sani, for your uh, very nice and very detailed introduction uh, to welcome me for this today's uh, GLS on SDGs. And I'm very happy to be part of this today's uh, uh, event. And I believe the participants will be learning many more new techniques of uh, this digital era, what actually the education and institutions are doing. And also, I'm very glad that I had the chance to hear from the uh, Professor Wan Abdul. Uh, Rahim and his expertise area and uh, let me share my PowerPoint presentation and I will be directly going to share it. Uh, let me know if you can see it. Yes, we can see it clearly. Just a second. 
Okay. So thank you so much uh, for inviting me to be a part of this uh, session as a speaker. And I'm Sir Mr. Saad Rahnul Islam. I'm working as the Senior Assistant Director of International Affairs of Daffodil International University, Bangladesh uh, since 2013. And uh, my area of specialization is mostly the internationalization. I manage the international office uh, with a, team, a very young team uh, of this uh, international office. So uh, my today's topic is digitalization as a core pillar for institutional sustainability. And uh, the experience that I will be sharing is from the Daffodil International University's perspective, where I myself is now working as well as I'm an alumni of this university. So uh, let me share with you a few background, uh, some basic information of our university. So Daffodil International University is one of the top ranked private university in Bangladesh. Uh, we, we established uh, in the year 2002. So we are a young university still now. We have uh, in total, we have 20, 2000 plus students in our university. So the picture you have seen is the green campus of our university. It's just located in the heart, uh, in the near of the city. It's called the capital, it's Dhaka. And in this university, we have around 400 international students from different parts of the world. We have the students from uh, African countries, Asian countries, as well as some other part of the world. And of course, to facilitate uh, this uh, university's academic activities and administrative activities, we have more than 1,200 plus uh, academic and administrative staffs in the university, as well as uh, to talk about the internationalization, we have established a, a very vast area of international network. So we have more than 430 plus uh, international partnerships globally. And we are also part of the global ranking. As a university, we rank uh, within the uh, 400, top 400 in the impact ranking by the Times Higher Education, as well as we are ranked university from the QS ranking from Bangladesh. We are the top three in Bangladesh. And also we are part of the UI Green Metric uh, as we are the top one, we are the top university as a part of the green initiative in the campus. So this is just a holistic approach of the university that I have just shared with you. So let's talk about uh, this, the topic that I have chosen to give this today's lecture. So the quality education, it's about this day from this SDG point of view. So our previous speaker already explained about the SDG issues, the basics. So I think you have already know about the basics of sustainable development goals, the 17 goals. So one of the goal that we are the people we are working is about the education area is quality education, the goal number four. So how to ensure this? This is the big challenge. And of course, not only a challenge during this COVID-19 uh, situation, it is more challenging than the previous time to give the quality education, to disseminate the education to all types of people. And during this lockdown or during this uh, uh, uncertain time. So how we can actually assure it. So I am going to share with you uh, how actually our university was ready for this situation from the very beginning and how we actually ensured the quality education through the power of digitalization. So uh, here I'm sharing one of the initiative uh, as a Bangladesh university, we started uh, the movement and the movement called One Student, One Laptop. And the motto was knowledge and technology across borders. So with this uh, motto, One Student, One Laptop, we started the initiative to giving a laptop to each and every student who started uh, admitting to our university since 2010. So from there, we have distributed more than 40,000 free laptops to our to each and every student who just admitted into university so that our university student can uh, fit themselves to this you know, fast growing world. And this is a picture uh, that's during this COVID-19 situation, uh, our students received the laptops uh, on campus, uh, each and every student so that they can continue their education from their home, from their village or wherever they are so that they don't uh, go to the back and they don't, uh, they can't, Give, uh, get the quality education, but uh, our goal is to give the quality education to everyone wherever they are. And how actually we ensure this quality education through this digitalization and digital platform. So our university is actually focusing on ICT base. So here are some of the initiative I would like to share with you, like Go Edu platform. This Go Edu platform is an open online education platform where our students are getting different kinds of courses 
that are actually making them more fit for this digital world. The courses are focusing on business, entrepreneurship, engineering, leadership, and all other aspects. And as well as uh, Daffodil International University is a part of a big concern. We call it Daffodil Family, where we have the university, different IT institutions. So this 45 concern of Daffodil Family is also interconnected. So we are actually giving the quality education and we are connecting the industry and this field from this Daffodil Family point of view so that our students during this pandemic, as well as other times, they can get more practical based knowledge from this quality education. As well as we have the skill jobs, this platform is actually a virtual platform where after finishing the graduation, our students, they have their own profile in this skill jobs platform where they can actually get the job circulations. They can do the application to all over the country as well as internationally, because many of our graduates are getting jobs in Japan, in China, in other Asian countries as well. And through these jobs are actually connected through this skill jobs platform. And also the university as its operations, we, we have implemented different features actually like the digital features, we call it digital best practices within the university system. So when actually one student, he, start, he or she start his education in our university, they start with digital platform. So they do the online registration, they get the result and the evaluation, everything is through online. Uh, all our staffs and everyone actually uh, get their information, get their salary and everything through the online platforms as well as the each and every student teachers, they have their own profile where actually teachers can actually check each and every student's uh, database as well as their uh, growth, how they're actually doing through their academic status. So they can actually check, they have their own email address as well, which is very common in other universities as well. And also we have our own app services where we get all kinds of services through this app as well as we have the other services like one card solution and everything so that during the pandemic they don't need to come to the university but they can give their payment and everything through the one card solution and to run the university with more uh, digital platforms we also initiated these four platforms that i would like to share with you all this is campus tv where our students teachers and the staffs, they always connected and get the information. And this campus TV is actually facilitating by the students of the journalism and mass communication. They are doing different programs for the university. And this campus TV is also not only for the university, but it is also serving the community where our university is established. As well as we have the DIU forum, which was established in 2009, where there are a lot of resources, not only by the university, but also by the community from different part of the world. They're also enriching this forum by writing different blog, as well as different article as well, which is very rich in last 12 years as well as we have the campus radio is similar to the campus tv by the university teachers and students they are also running these uh, platforms which is one of our very core uh, best practices from the digital point of view and uh, to make the university uh, status more digitally fit for the academic point of view we have the education erp before the pandemic, we used to run it as an education ERP where all our university's academic curriculum, academic structure, exams, and everything was actually uh, integrated through this education ERP platform. We have our DIU e-library, which is very much enriched with a lot of uh, books, a lot of resources, papers, and journals from different parts of the world. And also we have the cybersecurity center. We know that uh, to keep uh, this uh, digital platform safe, we have our own cybersecurity center, which is not only serving our university, but also the cybersecurity center is giving the support to the national level uh, with the national security center, cybersecurity center. So this cybersecurity center is also a core feature for our digital best practices. So if we talk about the strategy of the university, so we have actually six pillars of uh, uh, university. So digitalization is one of the strategic priority of the university from the very beginning. And uh, we are very much connected in social network as well. So our university's goal is to be connected with the community, with the country and globally as well. So we have enriched our social media network in all the platforms. But of course, Facebook is one of them. 
and we have more than 2.8 million followers in our sort of Facebook page, Verified page of Daffodil International University. You have seen the uh, screenshot that I have integrated here. And of course, uh, suddenly, uh, the beginning of 2020, we started facing the uh, COVID-19 pandemic in all around the world. Uh, so Bangladesh, in uh, Indonesia, and of course, uh, other part of the world, every country, every country started facing the problem. So which is like an intermission, like a movie, like uh, suddenly uh, some uh, new features are affecting the whole scenario of the world. So how this COVID-19 affected the scenario in Bangladesh? I'd like to focus on that. So the major threats for education in Bangladesh started uh, just from the March 25th uh, of 2020 and more than 1.3 million HEC higher, higher education uh, candidates are unable to sit for national board exam due to this pandemic and lockdown. And there were other reasons behind this because of the high speed internet availability in rural areas. So many students, those were uh, supposed to live in Dhaka in the capital or in the city area due to lockdown, they left the city and they go to their hometown and they couldn't continue their education through this digital platform. So how actually it was solved and how the universities uh, can make themselves so sustainable because there was no exam is going on. There is no new students from the HEC level. So that, that was actually the problem. So new students crisis was one of the core issue for the universities to get uh, for the sustainability. So let me explain with you the more information how we as a university could save ourselves. So as like other universities, we other universities in Bangladesh as well as globally, we started facing the problem the same. So we initiated more digital platforms to integrate in our university system. So the first one that our university management initiated is called Smart Edu. I will talk about it later. So how Smart Edu is actually facilitating the whole university system. We also had the partnership with Coursera so that our university students, staffs and teachers, they can get more variety types of courses from the Coursera and so we initiated this initiative and also we integrated the academic activities with the new platform it's called blended learning centers called BLC. So as I told that I will talk about the Smart Edu. So Smart Edu is a platform that syncs with virtual education environment collaboration and management effectively and efficiently. So this platform is integrated with more than 50 features like uh, reduce the student dropout. We have the easily tracking system so that we can track the student. We have the power of teamwork, like we have the smart uh, chatbot where actually we can integrate all the features and our students, teachers and staffs, they can actually get the services, they can track everything. So Smart Edu is the platform where all the services of the university that are working are integrated into one platform so that the students from any part of the country, teachers from any part of the country, or even the admin or the administrative staffs from any part of the country, they can be connected to each other and they can solve the issues and complete the task within this COVID-19 situation or whenever in the future. And the blended learning center that I was talking about. So blended learning center is actually the learning platform where all the academic courses, all the academic activities, the exams and everything was integrated. So that each courses, for each courses, there was one platform under this blended learning center where the teachers can evaluate the student's activity. They can track the student's activity. There are forum participation. And also of course the peer assessment and the student's feedbacks are also there. So we had the chance to integrate this uh, system very fast uh, few months of this uh, COVID-19 outbreak. And we ensured that almost 100% uh, participation by our students to join this platform to continue their education. And also we integrated uh, through these digitalization best practices like we have seen not only our university, of course, I, I believe that universities from all around the world, they also face the uh, same problem that uh, there are a lot of students, they, they drop the semesters, they drop the education. So we, we thought that we need to find out the solutions. How can we track the students? How can we track the problems and how can you solve this issue? So we integrated dropout solution is one of the uh, feature of this Smart Edu platform, as well as the mentoring monitoring system where our teachers, 
they actually can track their um, advising students under the courses and they can track how the students are facing the problem. They can talk to their parents, they can talk to them, they can find the solution and they can actually give them any kind of solution that is possible by the university. So this is how we mentor and monitor the system and we try to cope up the situation of dropout problem and we try to bring maximum number of students back to the campus virtually. And if we talk about uh, the result, the impact of this uh, digitalization, how we face it. So we have seen that from our survey to the university and the database that in spring 2020, like the beginning of the semester of the year, we have around 23,000 students. So just after two months, we started facing the COVID-19 outbreak. So the COVID, for the COVID-19 outbreak, suddenly, the student number was below 18, uh, 19,000, almost 3,000 gap because of this outbreak. And many students are not confident to continue their education uh, during this outbreak. But for these digital breaks practices, uh, we got the confidence and the students started coming back. So on the next semester during the fall, we have more than 20,000 students. And of course, right now we have more than 23,000 students once again, uh, because of our these digital best practices and students are happy with the platforms and these digital practices. So we also observe the admission process like uh, spring 2020, we have more than 4,400 uh, uh, students admission in one semester, but in summer it dropped uh, within 1,000. So just because of our digital best practices, we had the online admission, we have the online payment, we have the online feature, we have the online education based platform in Bangladesh. So the, the number of student admission rises up to more than 2000 during this pandemic, in the middle of the pandemic during the fall, I mean the September, 2020. And if we talk about the payment, it is also same, the growth is, uh, was stopped during the beginning of spring 2020, but during the summer and fall, it raises more than 70 to 80%. And also the total number of online courses that we have in the blended learning center. Before the pandemic, during the spring 2020, we have around 568 courses in, in our blended learning center, but we trained our academicians, we trained our professors and everyone to uh, implement and to start the courses in online platform. So just within four months of time during the summer, uh, we we had the chance to uh, introduce 1,623 courses. And of course, in fall, it also raises a few courses. So this is how actually we ensure the sustainability. We are talking about the education, we are talking about the sustainability. So if we are not able to give the services, give the education to the students uh, during this pandemic, we, are, we cannot sustain our education system in the university. So some of the initiatives that we have also taken from this digitalization point of view for the students. So what are the new few features? So we also given the low cost internet package to our all these students because we initiated partnership with the mobile companies in Bangladesh because many of our students, they left the city, they went to their villages. So they started filling prices for the, uh, you know, like for the internet and others. So we give them low cost internet package. And also many students, they are facing psychologically a week because they are staying for home for more than a year, for more than six months. They are not physically fit. So it is also necessary to support them. So we started online psychological support center where we give the online psychological support to our students. We also integrated the waiver and instrument support because many students, parents are not earning uh, the same that they had before. They have many, many financial issues and problems during the COVID-19 situation. So we try to understand it and we try to give them the best waivers and installment support to our students. Also, we have uh, checked that, that many students are graduating during this COVID-19 situation. So they also need to search for the job. They need to go to the job market. So we integrated the online employability skill test where our students actually uh, check themselves how they are actually fit for the job fair that they can actually go for the interview. And also to the university system, 
who we integrated the e-ticket e service. So what actually the e-ticket service like? When the students are not on the campus, but they need some service from the campus, so they can actually book the schedule and they can actually take the e-ticket for the services they want from the university. Also, we have the online discuss module where students, teacher, and as well as the administrative staff, they can discuss anything within the university system that is we also integrated. We have the job reporting, the, all the academic and administrative staffs, they are interconnected with their superiors and with their boss and everyone so that they can report their job and we can actually make everything done. And of course, the university management invested the new more budget for the IT resources to develop because we need to uh, be digitally fit that we have before, but we need to develop it time to time so that we can actually ensure the quality education, we can ensure the services of the university. And of course, we are also interconnected with the HGG number 17, that is a partnership for the goals, which is I think the more important uh, from the UN goals because of that, we also uh, made a lot of new partnerships in last many years. We are very much focused on internationalization. Right now we have more than 30 international partner universities globally. And to talk about the internationalization and digitalization in one, uh, platform, we call it uh, virtual mobility that is happening right now. Like I myself is now joining this uh, uh, global GLS on SDGs, which is also one of the part of it. So we integrated the international addition with our digital features. So we just started the different initiative when the COVID-19 outbreak happened. So we converted all of our mobility programs to the virtual mobility. We initiate different e-talks, webinars. We have the COIL program with our different partner universities. We initiated our summer school programs virtually. And also we have different programs that I'm going to explain uh, uh, later on. So how actually this uh, virtual mobilities uh, were initiated and how our students got the facilities. So in 2020, if I talk about the result, like in 2019, uh, during the normal period, we have more than four, 500 plus uh, mobility programs, uh, that is credit mobility. But in 2020, uh, during the COVID-19, we initiated the virtual mobility programs, who, which were much more accessible by the students because of the uh, digitalization, as well as it is cost effective. Of course, when you are joining the virtual mobility programs, you have more chances to join uh, the other universities to know about uh, the different courses and you complete different classes as well under the professors from different universities. So we had more than 773 international mobility programs uh, where our students actually took part. So these are some pictures I would like to share like during the COVID-19 this year and also last year we had our summer school program which is called Virtual International Social Business Summer Program. Of course, we had five students from the ITS who took part in the summer school program uh, where we had more than 135 students from different parts of the world, more than 22 countries. They have joined the summer school program. We also had the virtual social business students forum where we had also participants from many different countries. We also integrated the virtual exchange project with our Russian partners, where our students and also our uh, Russian partner university students, they jointly integrated the project called virtual exchange project. It's about the youth development and cultural diversity matching between the both countries. And also we had different virtual exchange programs where our students are taking part, like also in GLS on SDG, our students are taking part. Our students are taking part in the programs in Turkey, in, in Malaysia, in Indonesia, and other part of the world in South Korea, and other part of the world for learning the different courses under this virtual exchange program. And also we invited a lot of speakers, faculty members to come to our university virtually to teach our students under the faculty exchange mobility programs. And also we have other different leadership training exchange program where our teachers students, and also the admin people like us, we also took part in the virtual leadership training exchange program. And under the Erasmus Plus project, we also invited professors from Europe 
to take classes and lectures during this COVID-19 period. We had the choir program with our partner from Belgium, from the UK, from Coventry University, where our students took part uh, for the lectures as well as our teachers, they were teaching under this uh, collaborative online international learning. We had different virtual conferences where our university researchers, students took part. Also, we invited uh, researchers from different countries to give uh, their research works in the virtual conferences. Uh, these are some other initiatives uh, similar to the virtual mobility programs and also online conferences, as I have mentioned that we are also taking part as well as hosting different conferences. And uh, as the university need to move ahead with new partnership possibilities, other partners to sign the agreement with our university virtually. We also initiated the virtual photo exhibition uh, where our students and our uh, staffs, they're they are taking part with the virtual photo exhibition, as well as we integrated the virtual farewell ceremony for our international students because every year we, we have a lot of international students from different countries, but the lip the country during this COVID-19 period, and we couldn't say them goodbye. So we hosted the virtual farewell ceremony where we integrated our robotics department uh, to support the initiative and to bring them at least some idea of uh, uh, the virtual farewell ceremony to give the congratulations to our international students. And also we integrated the digital hybrid classroom and facility for classes for the students so that they can at least get some uh, some idea of the you know physical classes on campus so that they are in one frame like one classroom on campus and uh, also we gave the online course on art and science of online learning because we we had the, the idea that uh, students those who are actually uh, coming to take admission, they don't have any idea about online learning or online uh, teaching and learning areas. So we tried to give them some training on online courses. So this is what, this was one of the initiatives by the university. And also we integrated the virtual educate. This is the admission fair. So all our educational initiatives by the Daffodil Education Network came to one platform. And the students from all around the country, they can take admission from this uh, one stoppage education platform that is also our own platform by the Daffodil family. And also we integrated the interactive management system, which is called IMS, and that is actually for school and college to run their education system online. So we uh, introduced the schoolbd.ac and also college.ac so that the schools and colleges of Bangladesh, they can actually take the service for their own institution to serve the students better in this pandemic situation. And last but not the least, how actually this uh, digital transformation uh, put the impact on the university's uh, sustainability. So the first one, as I said, that when we are digitally fit, our university is fit for the world, fit for the students to serve, and they are actually sustainable uh, when actually we are digitally fit. And when you are digitally fit, when you are digitally uh, active, it is more cost effective and flexible in communication because all we know that we have smartphone on our hand and we can actually, anytime we can be connected. So what we actually initiated to make it more effective cost-effective and flexible uh, as a part of digital transformation. And also like risk and time management, we can make it more easier and shareable resources. When we are digitally fit, we have all our data and resources uh, to the cloud and we can share it very easily to anyone. And also student enrollment and engagement because when we are digitally fit, our students actually get the confidence to take admission and we can make our university more sustainable that the students can actually uh, take the admission and they can be fit for the global world. And of course, when we have this, all the issues are very much uh, integrated to each other, we can act actually ensure the uninterrupted education. Because if you're not digitally fit, if your education is not accessible by everyone from any part of the world, maybe your education system is not as it is that it should be. So it is also necessary to make sure that 
you have an uninterrupted education system in the university. Also, it is a matter that uh, when you are digitally free, your employer satisfaction for the jobs are also very important and we can actually ensure it. And when you are digitally fit, we can achieve the virtual mobility, which is I call the internationalization plus. And that is what we are doing at this moment as well. Like through the partnership, we are digitally connected to each other. And through all this process, we can ahead, one step ahead to achieve the sustainable development goals, to achieve all the 17 goals one by one through this quality education. And that is all from me and my message to everyone and from this point of view that when we are digitally fit, we can actually achieve everything more easily than the previous days. So we have to accept this new normal that we are facing right now. And when we have digitally fit, we can actually make sure that our institutions are actually digitally fit to be sustainable, which is actually the core pillar that from my uh, presentation. So. Thank you very much, everyone, for listening to me. If you have any question, feel free to ask me. And thank you so much for the opportunity to talk about uh, digitalization as a core pillar for institutional sustainability from the point of view of the Foodil International University. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Raihan from University International at the Foodil International University. Um, that was a great. Uh, speech or lecture. So uh, I, I can get the, the message that uh, never give up in this situation, even though we are in the pandemic situation, uh, we still can survive to keep the university business process go on. So one of the solution uh, from uh, Dovodil International University is uh, by using the digital platform and digital transformation. Exactly. Okay. Um, so uh, it's time for us to go to the next session. It's question and answer. Um, so before we proceed, I will check uh, in the form whether anybody uh, already feel uh, the question in the form. So, uh, so there isn't right now, but I think I have question for uh, Dr. Rahim first. Uh, I have question for Dr. Rahim. Um, what are the advantages of the SSM uh, compared to the other approach? For example, uh, the BPM or business process modeling or maybe the design thinking. Okay, um, thank you. Thank you, uh, Asani, for the question. I think it's a good question, yeah. Uh, I think in a lot of our methodology, normally we have tendency to compare, looking at what are the advantages, what are the disadvantages, what are the limitations, yeah. So uh, the soft system um, approach is actually where we would like to look at the people in intensive yeah uh, oriented yeah so this is basically looking at where the requirement is quite difficult to quantify so we are looking at looking at uh, involving um, people with different perspective to to put into holistic view yeah so basically this is where uh, it is being recommended because we are looking at how the process and uh, intermingle with the human activities okay and uh, this is where the, uh, it is much differ with other systems because uh, it is um, people in intensive and it's, it also has been implemented in, in various organizations where they are looking at it not just for people intensive but also for management oriented okay so that would be the the, the different thing that I think when we have um, undergraduate uh, technical uh, students coming to the master's program, they should be thinking as managers. Yeah, So not just to come up with a solution, uh, that's it, uh, but looking at the various uh, uh, perspectives, then um, only then they need to decide accordingly. Okay, uh, hopefully that answered your, your question, Pasani. Yeah, sure. Thank you very much. So, uh... 
involving the other uh, stakeholder, I think, and then uh, find to uh, the pers the other perspective, uh, empathize uh, the the user, and then uh, the problem itself. I think uh, that is the conclusion for your answer. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Rahim, for uh, the answer. And then. Uh, for the participant, you can also ask directly in here by using raise hand feature. Uh, you can raise hand uh, feature, and then you can ask directly the question and to whom the question is addressed. So before we get the question from the participant, I also have a question for uh, Mr. Raihan. Um, that is a great uh, achievement. Uh, your university, I think you success in digital transformation. So my question is, uh, what are the key success factor for those digital transformation? Okay, so thank you so much for the question. So the key success factor was actually like uh, the interest from all level that everyone actually was very much positive about these digital uh, changes, like from the management to the teachers, to the students, everyone actually took the initiative very positively, like from the very beginning of the university uh, operation, like uh, from the very beginning, we are actually like IT-based focused university. So the management actually took every initiative focusing on the digitalization. And as I said, that during 2010, we started giving the one student, one laptop project to each and every student to fit for the world. So from that point of view, the, it was actually raising one by one in every year. So when actually we started facing the COVID-19, the university management didn't take uh, any time late. So they started uh, initiating the Smart Edu and Blended Learning Center and all other initiatives to make it more sustainable so that anyone who is staying anywhere, they can actually get the access and they can continue the education. So the mindset is very important here that I would like to focus that everyone actually had the positive mindset to set up this digitalization to the individual level as well as institutional level. So that is what makes sense from our end. Thank you very much for the answer. So um, wha what about the stakeholder uh, participation? I mean, uh, is there any uh, participation uh, from uh, the other stakeholder. Mm, did you mean uh, the partners or like? Yes, the partner and then maybe the government and maybe. Yeah, I mean, from the government, we had the uh, same inspiration from some level, but also because maybe some other universities has the difficulties. So what we have done so far, like when we established our university more on digital practices. So we try to help the other universities. Like we have the university from the military, like Bangladesh University of uh, Professionals, BUP. Uh, and it is actually by the military. So we try to implement uh, this similar project to their university as well to develop their system, as well as we give the, this kind of uh, initiatives to other universities, school and college. Like I have told you, like there is also um, internal uh, initiatives by the university as well for others. So this is what we have done, but from the government level, we had, it is like kind of mixed. Sometimes it was positive, sometimes it was slow because it is not only fixed by us, but also by the government level. So it was, depending on the time to time but when it is the beginning level they were not confident but when they have seen that yes we have done it so maybe others can do the same so this is how we also try to share the best practices with others okay thank you very much for uh, the feedback so um go back to the participant maybe you have a question for uh, dr rahim or mr raihan Please, you can use uh, the raise and feature, or also you can type the question directly into the chat box. 
So before we uh, continue to uh, participate, uh, participant question, uh, go back to uh, Dr. Rahim. Um, I saw from your presentation, um, there are problems with the parents. The parents in uh, how you call the orang asli, orang asli, the parent, the parent uh, still go work and then maybe the education is uh, the second, second priorities. So how did you overcome this problem? Yeah, uh, I think uh, there, there is an ongoing battle, I think, um, basically on the awareness, yeah, on the importance of education. I think um, the, the most important is for them to value the education, yeah, because normally the parents may not be well educated, so they may not, they may need to live on the sense of getting for yeah, basic necessities, yeah. But in terms of um, trying to do some social transformations, trying to ensure that um, their offspring, the children would be getting a better future, yeah, uh, that is something that need to be tackled accordingly. And normally they are they are quite close knit community. It's quite difficult difficult to penetrate uh, to this particular community because um, they they tend to uh, trust more. Yeah, uh, when um, so. We need to engage with uh, their representative. It's quite difficult to just simply go and uh, from house to house. We need to be respectful of the the custom. Yeah, uh, looking at who are their leaders, who are their representative. Yeah, before we can actually penetrate into that particular community. So it's quite a challenge. Yeah, but I think uh, the students manage to do a proper way of uh, trying to get the right people. Yeah. Uh, trying to engage the right people in the sense of uh, tackling tackling the the representative first, yeah, to get their trust, and then from there maybe uh, when they engage with the committee, they have the representative with them to explain, yeah, and um, normally the language barrier as well, yeah, some they have their own uh, so-called dialect, yeah, uh, that that need to be uh, used uh, accordingly. So so if if we have the representative, they will be able to explain that too. Yeah, but again, um, it's, it's more about uh, awareness. Yeah, but, but I think the sentiment would be improved uh, better if we if if the trust is there. Yeah, if they can see the beneficial of getting um to educate their children to get um uh, uh education at a much more higher education, they can change their lifestyle and change the. The, the way that they get income for that particular uh, family, yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, you're welcome for uh, the question, thank you. Uh, we have one uh, participant uh, who raised uh, her hand virtually from Dewi Amelia. Uh, okay. Good evening. Um, actually, I have a question for Mr. Shirahan because uh, students around the world are frustrating because of the online learning, because we are studying from home and um, the motivation are going down because of different environment actually. So what about Deaf Down University and what, um, what kind of student motivation over there? And because we have different kind of study environment and we're away from our friends, that's it. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Amelia, for it's a very nice question. So the motivation is actually always it's a self-motivation that we believe. But in, in the Affordable International University, we have the motivation is actually about our teachers. So who actually motivate our students to be a part of this global education system, like the virtual mobility programs, and to join the classes online. So uh, we first motivated as a university, we motivated our teachers to be fit with this uh, global pandemic situation uh, practices online. So we motivated our teachers and our teachers actually exchange program, student exchange program, summer school program virtually. Uh, so the teachers are actually in the driving seat to push and to motivate the 
students. Uh, that is what I have experienced in our university. So I also would like to uh, express like today is the teacher's day. So it is also, uh, we would like to wish every teachers like happy teacher's day and a good job for their, all the things and congratulations. Thank you for the answer. As, is there any feedback from uh, Ms. Dewi Amelia? Yes, sir. I, I got it. Thank you. Okay. So uh, that is very, very general uh, question and general problem in every, every uh, online learning. Uh, it will be a specific discussion and then long discussion about this. Okay, thank you very much for the participation. Uh, we have one more question from uh, Mr. Heru, who already raised uh, his hand virtually. Okay, please. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Nice for uh, Maybe I want to ask to Mr. Raihan, yeah. Uh, about the method in the learning system or educational system using online now. Uh, what do you think about the participant of, uh, of the teachers? Uh, I mean, in the real world or on in the offline method, yeah. Is it still necessary or uh, in the future, it just like uh, still as the major uh, activity that we need to improve our learning, our educational in face-to-face, uh, -face, I mean, in the real world or offline method or maybe the online system will be the major of the educational that we need in the future to make a uh, uh, better education so the teacher maybe uh, will decrease in the number of the teachers in the future and the secondly about the uh, online system uh, how about the result of the examination of the child uh, of the student i mean uh, do we have a uh, hundred percent of trust word on their result uh, i mean that uh, does he or she uh, do their uh, task by their own or maybe get some help from the others uh, actually maybe we don't need about the result in the number but we need the result as an actual, what we need to improve in the next year or, or in the next semester to get our student is better. Uh, I think like that, maybe Mr. Rahan can uh, discuss with us. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. These two questions are also very crucial as well as very important. I think uh, globally people are also talking about these issues everywhere, not only this uh, platform. So the first one is when we are actually shifting to uh, the, uh, the real world once again, like we are coming back to the campus. We are thinking about whether we will integrate this digital platform, integrate this online education, or we will move directly to the physical teaching once again. I think my point of view is like, we have to keep it as an option. Like it is not mandatory, but we need to keep it as an option. Like we don't know if it is the fourth or fifth wave is coming from this COVID-19 with a new variant. We don't know anything. So that uh, we need to think about the future. We need to be ready. Like, as I said, like our university very from the very beginning, we were ready with different digital practices inside the university. So it was quite a bit easier than any other institutions to fit with the new platforms, fit with this new normal of digitalization. So what is my point? Like we have to keep it as an option, not as a mandatory. Like we have to run our education system as it is because we all know that when it is practical teaching, when it is real life classroom teaching, it is very important. It is very effective in terms of learning as well as teaching in both perspective. What we have to do, suppose like we have a huge rain today and some of the students are not able to come so what the student uh, teachers need to do the teachers can open an online class within this physical classroom teaching and they can invite the students those who are not able to come to the campus so that they can join online and they can actually get the education from their home only for those five students not actually the whole classes so this is how we need to keep it as an option so that the education can be accessible from any point of view. So this is actually my answer. 
And for your second question, uh, uh, can you repeat your second question? I forgot what is actually the main point, your second question. Uh, Professor Hiro, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, Mr. Rehan. Yes. I mean, yeah. uh, my, my second question is about the trustworthy, about the result of our yeah. of the examination of the student where, mm -hmm. where they did the examination at home. Yeah, uh, I got about it. That, uh, yeah. It so about it is about the, the trust. The result, yeah. But the, yeah. the, 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 what, what the school need uh, or, the, or the university need to improve their capability in the real, not in the fake. I mean, like that, because maybe with with uh, online, they can uh, uh, did their task or their uh, examination any place, uh, maybe mm -hmm. in the room or the, at their home, and they can get some help from the other people, you know, something like yeah. that. Yeah, I got it. So it is about the evaluation as well as uh, trusting the student. That is actually the fact. So yeah, this is all about actually, I think the teacher's uh, skill how the teacher actually can integrate uh, his classes with the online platform. So my point of view is that the teacher need to be focused on the questionnaire, focus on the exam, uh, exam materials so that the students cannot uh, make any copy or uh, not can make any kind of copy paste from the online or from any other resources. So the teachers need to be trained the more, so the university need to train the teacher the way so that the teachers can uh, take the exams or the, uh, I mean the evaluation, everything more better way, more effective way so that the mm -hmm. students cannot copy or students cannot uh, make anything, you know, like uh, from any other resources. So that should be more digitally fit. Like, you know, like we are going to the fourth industrial revolution. So there will be more, um, what should I say like, uh, AI based software in the in the examinations and others. So there should be new techno technologies integrated to the evaluation system. So this is how I think we can, as well as it is a matter of ethics. So beside the digitalization, the teachers and the universities need to make their students more ethically fit based beside the digitally fit. So when the students are ethically fit, I think they will be also more fit for these exams or education system. So we need to think about the both issues like digitally as well as ethically. That is what we okay. think. Okay, Mr. Raihan, maybe it's a big issue here. Yes. <laughs> but, but I get it, it's uh, the point of your view. I think uh, yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. Thank you, yeah. thank you, Mr. Thank Raihan. Thank you so much, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for the question and answer. Uh, Actually, it's also a long discussion about this. Okay, move on to uh, from the uh, form question. Uh, I will share my screen, and this is the question from a participant uh, in the uh, form. Uh, Ms. Fatia Rahmanisa from ITS Surabaya. Would you mind to ask yourself and open your mic or I just read your question, Ms. Fatia. Yes, Mr. Nisfu, I I guess you can you can um, you can tell that. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, I will read the question for uh, Mr. Raihan. Uh, she wants to know uh, more about the difference between Smart Edu and then the Blended Learning Center. And also, our student can access all the site facility from university in just one click. Or if the student want to access every site, they have to access it one by one. Uh, okay, thank you so much uh, for the question, Fatia. So, Actually, these are separate platform, but integrated in, in one website. 
So if I talk about the smart edu, which is basically more based on the services by the university, like non, not academic, but which is mostly like administrative or the services you want, like you need the transcript from the university. So you go to the smart edu platform and you apply for it. Maybe you need to apply for the waiver facility. So you go to the smart edu, you select the waiver option of the smart edu platform and you can get the uh, uh, get the waiver form and everything maybe like you need to apply for some other documents or you need to come to the university for some other services so you go to the smart edu platform and if i talk about the blended learning center which is actually the academic platform like all the courses uh, are uploaded in this blended learning center. Uh, every course is in the account of the Indian Learning Center where students are enrolled. When you are enrolled for new semester, you are enrolled for new four courses in the blended learning center. So you get four courses in your in your uh, profile that is already you are enrolled for these four courses. So which is very much academic. And so as I mentioned, that Smart Edu is mostly based on services, and blended learning center is mostly based on the academic activities and the students can actually log in with their email and their dedicated password for their platform. So, which is very much easy and everyone is actually using it. And I hope you are clear with the answer. Thank you. Okay, so maybe just only a single account and then you can access all of the resources, even though uh, the resources is maybe different platform or different site, but you can right. access uh using one login am I login right? and your, your email address only okay yeah thank you okay i think it was clear uh, move on to second question from the audience okay from darenda uh, its surabaya uh, to mr raihan okay as an effort to digitize there must be uh, many challenges that must be faced, especially in developing countries. How do you convince the stakeholder about the importance of digitalization at your university? Yeah, it was actually not easy uh, to integrate this digitalization during the even the challenging time because during the COVID-19, everyone is actually staying at home. When we are having home office, the teachers cannot uh, teach everything very properly as like before. So the problems we have mostly faces uh, because uh, of the teaching online, because at the very beginning, the students were not that much motivated. So we face that the students cannot access these digital platforms so that they have less internet access sometimes, like not good uh, high speed internet. The second problem we have faced that we have a uh, aged uh, professor who are not digitally fit sometimes. So they know the, all the teaching techniques, they have good knowledge, but they don't know how to use the technology. So this is what we had the problem at the very beginning. So what we have done, we have selected some young faculty members from the IT background. So we trained them and they actually make different uh, sessions with our uh, like senior faculty members. We are not digitally fit. So with our young faculty members, we actually the students online during this uh, COVID-19 situation. So these are the two problems we face during this uh, COVID-19 or digitalization process. But we have uh, uh, covered it well. Uh, with new techniques, you know, when you have the problems, when you actually work out uh, as a team, you can actually find the solution. So this is how we actually overcome the problems. Okay, thank you very much for the answer. I think uh, it answered the question as well. So we, oh, sorry. We have one question from uh, Lucy Rahmawati, but I didn't get the the question in the in the message. So, is there uh, Miss Lucy Rahmawati? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so the question is blank. <laughs> I think just test the system whether it is <laughs> works or not. Okay, I think uh, there is no more question. Uh, the participant, are you sure you don't have any other question? Okay, I hope uh, there is no more question and then uh, no question left. And uh, I will conclude uh, from uh, Dr. Rahim speech that they uh, there is uh, sorry there are seven stage uh, representation in SSM. First, we have to enter the situation and then express the problem situation. And the third phase or stage are formulate the root definition of relevant system and then build the conceptual model and then compare those models with the real situation so we can have uh, the gap analysis. And then uh, we define possible change which are both possible and feasible. And then the last stage is the take action to improve uh, the problem situation, or we can evaluate our solution. And then from the second uh, speech from uh, Mr. Raihan, we know that it is very difficult to do the digital transformation, but with the strong uh, willingness and then uh, how we change uh, the mindset and also uh, the participation of all of the stakeholder, all of this uh, difficult situation uh, will be uh, addressed and then those digital transformation will work. I think uh, it's enough from me. Uh, maybe um, Dr. Rahim will give a closing speech. Um, thank you so much, Pak Sani, and uh, I would like to extend my gratitude again uh, to uh, the organizer, the secretariat, who has been working very hard to make this uh, event a successful one, and I wish all the best for the next series. Okay. Thank you very much for the closing uh, speech, and then uh, to Mr. Raihan. Yes, uh, thank you so much, uh, ITS, for organizing such an important session. And continuously from last year, of course, uh, so GLS is very good in initiative where actually the participants, the students can get a variety type of knowledge from all around the world, uh, professors, those who are coming and joining the sessions. I thank ITS and I thank you, uh, Nisifu, as well as the other team member, uh, Ms. Rainey, and other everyone who actually joined here to make it a successful one. And of course, all the participants. Thank you so much. And I hope to join once again and hopefully in person in ITS. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the closing speech. And then I think this is the end of our uh, main session. So I am Sonny, your moderator. I'm sorry for the inconvenience. And then thank you for your attention and great participation. I hope we still uh, have uh, other opportunity to uh, do or to discuss in the other opportunity. Uh, keep safe, keep healthy, virtually and physically. Back to you, uh, Master of Ceremony. Thank you so much, Pak Sony. And thank you to Professor Wan Abdul Rahim, Mr. Shat Raihan, and also Pak Sony for the lively discussion today. I believe that all the audience have gained more insights about the sustainable development goals on quality education, especially on IT and digitalization subjects. So now to all participants, I would like to invite you to give a big round of applause to our speaker and moderator by using the Zoom reaction feature. All right, so now uh, we would like to present a certificate awarding to our speaker and also our moderator today. So the first one, uh, the certificate to Professor Wan Abdul Rahim.
We truly apologize that the certificate is not yet fully signed since our campus is half open and uh, we will send the certificate once it is signed by our rector. And next one, uh, the certificate to Mr. Shet Raihan. And lastly, uh, the certificate to Bapak Nisfu Asrul Sani. Once again, thank you very much to Professor Wan Abdul Rahim, Mr. Shet Raihan, and also Pak Sony for sharing your valuable knowledge with us today. Now, before we end today's session, we invite all participants as well as the honorable speaker and moderator to take a group photo. So to all participants, please open your camera and get yourself ready. Uh, we have three slides, so please keep smiling until we finish the photo session. Uh, we will take the picture uh, three times. Okay, please turn on your camera. And I will start counting. One, two, three. Next slide. One, two, three. And last one, one, two, three. Okay, now we have finished the group photo. And then for the participants, I would like to remind you again about the feedback form. Uh, please submit the feedback form through the link that sent by our committee in the Zoom chat room. Uh, the link will be closed one hour after we finish the session. And uh, we want to remind you that the participants who will get the stamp for it are the participants who come on time, join this event until the end, and also fill the feedback form. Uh, lastly, before we end the session, I would like to remind you about the upcoming guest lecture series on SDG next week. Uh, we will discuss about goal, goal number six, uh, clean water and sanitation with speaker Dr. Siti Nurbaya Supardan from University Technology Mara. Uh, we will meet again on Tuesday at the same time at 3.30 Indonesia time. Uh, please kindly adjust with your own time zone. And uh, finally, we have reached the end of today's guest lecture series and we sincerely apologize for any mistake we may have made in presenting as masters of ceremony and also as committee. Thank you very much to our honorable speakers, moderator, and all participants for the attention and cooperation. We hope to see you again in our future programs. And don't forget to, allow, to follow our social media on Instagram at ITS International Office and keep updated to our programs. Good afternoon and wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you all participants. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, please allow us to end the session in three, two, one.